So before before we speak about uh, uh, science control, uh, 3M 3M is a science and technology company, uh, and uh, we have a lot of uh, products for oil and gas, both uh, downhole and topside. And uh, we are, today we speak about uh, sunscreens uh, for the downhole sand control uh, system. So how we came to the uh, this approach is uh, today we hear uh, there are a lot of uh, failures happening uh, in sand con downhole sand control, and majority of these failures are uh, resultant of uh, erosion or hot spotting of a uh, metallic screen uh, or a gravel pack or any other any other uh, products in the across the reservoir zone. Uh, this causes uh, expensive workovers or uh, multiple interventions for the product, uh, for the for the downhole sand control, and to repair them. And also, you have a lot of uh, long uh, uh, extended non-productive time uh, because uh, of uh, changing the sand control. Uh, 3M has uh, came out with this uh, 3M ceramic sunscreens, where we use a technical ceramics uh, in place of a metallic screen. In a metallic three, uh, like a three, uh, three one six uh, wire wrap or uh, or a mesh. Uh, here, it's a very simple technology, uh, which uh, keeps the sand out, and uh, also the cost down in terms of uh, increasing the mean time between the failure uh, of the downhole sand control, both intervention and new wells. Uh, why ceramics? Why, what what do we have from ceramics? Ceramics are very hard in nature. So maybe 10 times or even more larger, depending on uh, type of metal we compare. Uh, they are uh, ex uh, exceptionally wear resistant, as uh, we know the technical ceramics, and uh, also uh, used in severe conditions. So these ceramics uh, we use is called silicon carbide, um, which is um, inherent to a lot of uh, corrosive conditions, uh, H2S, CO2, so basically in uh, typical what you see in, uh, in the well. Uh, these materials are also used in the chemical industry uh, extensively. And this we have used uh, uh, in uh, sunscreen. Today we have uh, 75 installations worldwide, 50-50 in uh, oil, and oil wells and gas wells. Uh, you can see they're distributed all over the world from all the way from North Sea, UK, Denmark, uh, and Norway to all the way to, to Papua New Guinea and also towards the uh, west side in uh, Trinidad and uh, some of the South Africa, South American uh, region. How does it work? So it's a very simple, uh, it's a stack of ceramic rings. Uh, which are placed uh, on one on the uh, one on each other, uh, where you see. Uh, I just try to see if I can see. So here we have the ceramic ring, which looks like which has uh, on the top. Uh, you can see a spacer, uh, and the bottom you have a face where you when you put together uh, on each other, it creates a slot opening. So, and also we have this V-shape kind of design, which allows uh, to reduce the impact of plugging uh, where the sand, if there is something in there, can just flow through the base pipe and to run through to the top side. Uh, and so basically this is a base pipe. You can see the base pipe all over the length, and then we have uh, end caps uh, fixed on each side. So we put the end cap here, and the rings are stacked on one on the each other here, as you see. And then uh, we have a shroud, external shroud, uh, and then uh, we fix the screen. Uh, so we can put a different number of modules depend uh, depending on the length of the tubing uh, requirement and the sizes. We have different sizes of uh, screens which can fit inside a 278 inch tubing restriction all the way to an eight and a half inch open hole or a 958 inch casing. Uh, completions uh, requirement. So uh, it's uh, simplifying the sand control uh, to optimize the productivity, uh, and also you can reduce the expenditure set like uh, by reducing the number of uh, interventions or failures uh, of a downhole sand control. Also unlock production potential using interventions uh, by uh, in the intervention screens. Uh, there are a lot of shut-in wells worldwide. Uh, because of sand control uh, failures or 
because of no sand control in place uh, and uh, the well can be uh, brought into line uh, by using uh, downhole sand control like uh, ceramic sunscreen in this case. Uh, as uh, you know, 3M is, uh, has a long history of uh, over 100, nearly 100 years now uh, of experience and we have uh, state-of-art la laboratories um, and uh, we have uh, taken this product and uh, looked into the qualification process uh, using different, uh, understanding different uh, norms used in the oil and gas industry. So uh, this is API, uh, ISO 17824 is the well-known norm for the sand control, but uh, we went forward and uh, as the ISO 17824 has not been uh, followed any further, so we went forward and looked into the API 19SS, which is the current uh, standard for the sand control, which uh, is still in the developing phase uh, for uh, various operators and uh, service companies working together in US. So we worked uh, together uh, with operators and uh, did a lot of uh, qualification process, uh, which includes uh, basic uh, collapse and burst testing, all the way to uh, bending dog leg, running the screen in the dog legs. So everyone says ceramics. Who can I, can I run in a horizontal wells? Yes, of course. Uh, even in the high dog legs, uh, ceramics have that ability to run. The screen has that ability to run through the high dog legs and pass through the restrictions in the in the wells uh, and uh, we also have a sand control laboratory where we can perform some psd analysis and sanitation testing required uh, to define the slot opening and so on so question is where can i where can you apply the screens this, this ceramic screens i said when the metal, metallic screens come to its, uh, to its uh, limitation in terms of corrosion, erosion, uh, you can apply the ceramic screens in your wells. Uh, in a depleted reservoir, your um, gas ratio increases and you have a high risk of uh, potential hot spotting or erosion. Or uh, you can't place your screen uh, across the perforation with the ceramic screens. You can place the screen right across the perforation and produce from there whether it is a high-rate gas well or oil oil wells without having a fear of hot spotting the screen. And that's the beauty of the technology. So it uh, also increases uh, the lifetime of, the, of your production. Uh, screens, as I said, like screens can be uh, these screens can be used alternative to uh, a gravel pack. Uh, if if you are placing a case hole gravel pack or open hole gravel pack, just to protect a metallic screen from because of erosion risk or hot spotting risk, you are placing a gravel pack. In those instances, you can uh, replace the gravel pack and put a ceramic sand screen as a standalone screen uh, application. Uh, if you have a failures in uh, downhole sand control and uh, you need to repair it, you can also place uh, as one of the option. Uh, we have screens uh, which are, uh, um, have a high temperature and high pressure applications. So uh, we have uh, tested and qualified uh, applications up to 200 degrees centigrade, uh, but that's not the limit, we can even go higher. Uh, typical one of where, where we actually started uh, with ceramic screens is the propane flow back issues in uh, Denmark uh, with MASK. Uh, where they have a uh, frac and flow uh, application in a multi-zone, uh, 17, 18 zones, multi-zone co completion. Uh, so they had to protect, they, they fracked it and they produce it and they have a propane flow back. Uh, they are not allowed to use any chemicals or any kind of frac pack uh, or reduce, a, they don't want to use a frac pack in that instance. So hence they did uh, this kind of completion. And uh, there, they were expecting around about 100 feet per second or over that uh, roundabout and uh, place a ceramic screen across those uh, small perforation uh, frag zones in the multi-zone. That's how we started. And we have uh, multiple applications, both in uh, oil and gas wells, in this kind of applications as well. So I'll just speak a little bit about a few case studies. Uh, this is... Uh, may be very interesting uh, here for this topic of, uh, of this, uh, these two days, uh, using a light well intervention vessel interventions. So this, uh, this, kind of, this case study demonstrates uh, the robustness of the ceramic screens running in an open sea using a helix uh, vessel. 
um, and uh, we have done in one of the operator in uh, North Sea UK uh, waters, where the water depths range about 300 plus uh, feet, uh, roughly. And uh, the, the, the issue is here, they had a, it's an old oil well, just to the history, it's an old oil well, which uh, is not producing anymore, they shut in and they want to exploit the gas cap and uh, this is a very short uh, perforation interval, so expecting very high velocities. So, uh, to, and they want to do a very cheap and easy because it's not for long life. They are looking for one, one and a half year. Uh, so, uh, they want to get a simple deployment here. And they run the ceramic screen using uh, one of the interval product uh, with the packer. Here, uh, run through, uh, it's a hex packer. Uh, they used and run through a seven inch, uh, sorry, five and a half inch tubing uh, in, and set the screen inside a seven inch uh, liner across the perforations, the new perforations, the gas zone. And uh, the well uh, produced around about 45 millions initially and then uh, stabilized around about 40 million scuffs per day gas rates. There were two wells which were done a uh, similar way in the North Sea by this operator. Uh, another well uh, which uh, I would like to speak uh, is, uh, is a Trinidad. I see the picture is covered here somehow. Uh, it's a Trinidad, as a lot of people know, a little bit history of the Trinidad sands. They are the most aggressive sands uh, in the world, uh, as called in the, in the, at least in the textbooks. <laughs> so uh, because of its morphology uh, of the sand particles, and that's why traditionally this region is uh, do uh, mostly open all gravel packs or case all gravel packs. Uh, that's how it's been done and that's how it's been doing. So that's how we came in as a ceramic sunscreen, one of the major operators, uh, international company. They said, uh, let's try uh, ceramic screens here. So they applied, uh, as of today, we have five deployments here, two oil wells and three gas wells. And uh, in those wells, um, some are, uh, two, two were uh, failed gravel packs and it was as a, like a patch, ceramic screen patch inside this uh, failed gravel pack to stop the propent and uh, reservoir sand. And the other wells were, uh, they, they closed the down, uh, bottom zones and uh, perforated a shallower zone inside the tubing and set the screen inside the tubing using a wireline uh, run. And uh, the, 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 these wells, all these wells actually were shut in because, uh, because of, uh, they couldn't control the well of the sand uh, coming up. And uh, now they are producing in one of the wells, they are producing over 20 million scuffs uh, of gas. I speak about gas here. And uh, the, the well uh, productivity shown, uh, the skins less than one, f uh, uh, total mechanical skin was less than one. And this was analyzed using uh, software. Um, and uh, the downhole velocities, uh, this is an estimated velocity from the customer. Um, and uh, they expect it to be around about 100 feet per second. So typically, they do not go above uh, uh, 7 to 10 feet per second in their wells for a, a case hole gravel pack or open hole gravel packs. And uh, with this technology, they just went above their, their limits of uh, running. So the potential can be even higher. So uh, they, are, uh, they are trying to increase the rates and see where, where can it go. Uh, this is uh, uh, not an application, more a qualification uh, for uh, high-rate gas wells, where we speak from big bore applications of 200 million scuffs, 300 million scuffs gas rates where the customer initially is not expecting a sand uh, from a geomechanical study and uh, they want to keep uh, something ready on, uh, on, on shelf if something happens because one day loss is 200 million scuffs, that's uh, huge money uh, which would be lost. So uh, they have done a lot of um, uh, testings uh, for the application because one, this is a high rate gas well, second, it's a higher temperature above 150 degrees centigrade. It's not HPHT, but it's HT kind of uh, application. And it's a very high corrosive, uh, and uh, they have a high uh, uh, H2S and CO2 uh, partial pressure uh, CO2. So it's a higher grade uh, base pipes. 
they have done uh, various qualification and then we have uh, in Australia they have done like a consortium of uh, uh, multiple operators uh, together to review the sand ceramic sunscreens ability so they went up above the limits of the well requirements to test the screens to see if there will be a failure so they tested at a very high sand count uh, of 300 feet per second uh, and uh, with a with a air ni nitrogen they, they just uh, pumped it uh, to test it uh, an actual screen module they took a screen actual screen and that uh, they, they they pumped the uh, sand and air at uh, 300 feet per second to see unfortunately they couldn't see any failure of uh, loss of sand control on uh, ceramics and uh, for that they qualified the complete qualification process. Uh, there are two SP papers if you are interested you may uh, read in detail of the qualification process and uh, this uh, special, specific uh, consortium testing on it. So these are some references uh, for your notice uh, which uh, will offer you more details. That's it from our side. Thank you very much.